have a document called Robert Morrison Associates Guide to Key Business Ratios where they know what everybody's nets are and all their business ratios, return on investment, return on equity, all this kind of stuff. And when, before they'll ever lend you money, they check your business against the standards of the industries. So you can look up and find out what your margins are in your industry and all the others, and those become your goals because they'll be standard. You'll gravitate that towards that anyway in practice as you go through. Now, having said that, so if you're going to get in uh, computer parts, there will be a net profit and all sorts of other things for computer parts. But uh, having said that, how does that strike you? 10% net. Bad. 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 What does Safeway get? 2%. 2%. Whole Foods gets 50% higher than Safeway. 3%. Yeah. So, uh, so did everybody think that sounds bad, 10%? No. What do real estate agents get? Six. Yeah, six, unless they're splitting with somebody, then it's three and all that kind of stuff. But now they get high sales units, right? So 10% starts sounding like better than six, except uh, they, they're selling half a million, million, two million dollar houses in Seattle. Uh, there's this thing in classical economics, this, uh, what do you say, paradox, that the more essential the item, the narrower the profit margin. The less essential, the wider the profit margin. If you have wide profit margins, because people don't need your product, if it's essential, like water, the profit margins are razor thin. Wheat's pretty thin, rice is thin, sushi's very wide. Okay, as soon as you start messing with it and there's fewer and fewer people need it, the profit margins start getting wider and wider. Well, why? Well, they say profit reflects risk. It reflects a lot of stuff. It reflects the cost it takes, I think, to get people to go in there and do that. To get people to go in and put sushi together and bring all those disparate parts together, to get those people to come do that work, it's going to cost a lot of money. But to harvest, mechanize, intensive harvest a uh, rice, pack it, ship it, to get people to do that, there's so much going through that the profit margins can be razor thin. Okay? Jewelry diamonds, four or five hundred percent. Diamond bits, razor thin margins. So the more essential the item, the narrower the profit margin. You can't get away from what the profit margins are. They are what they are. So if you find that it's one quarter or one percent profit margin in your industry in that standard, you're probably not going to do much better than that when all is said and done. Why? Because everybody knows exactly what you're making. Everybody can look at your product and else in the industry and know what you're charging. And if you do charge a real super premium, huge one, way out of line, you're going to invite them in. Okay, you're going to tell them to come in and take your idea. They see you do it once, they see you do it twice, third time at the trade show, they'll go get your product too. Because they've got 500 items in their line, all making one quarter, one percent uh, return on, or whatever, a net profit and they see you making 5% time after time, they're gonna say, I'm gonna dump my worst performer and I'm gonna steal your idea. Does this make sense, you following this? So that really, since everybody knows everything in all industries or villages, everybody knows what everybody else, what uh, they're doing. So you can't even get a wider profit margin than better than normal. Much better than that. You are, it is what it is. You're not gonna get around that. So how, what do you do? Well. You do frequency at the small business level. You, you are going to get a super premium because you're at the small business level. There's going to be one. But the super premium, you're talking about Whole Foods versus Safeway. 2% versus 3%. Okay, not 2% versus 25%. Ain't going to happen that way. Okay? So, uh, $267. you are not going to have sales of $2,670 per year. That's, you're going to have to have bigger sales than that to, to make this worthwhile. What would be worthwhile to you? Okay, what would be a number that you'd have to have? Now this is where you start getting in, there's a problem here with this. Um, how much do you need to make in business? Now that's purely subjective. Uh, or do you, you hope to make money and have other people look at it and determine, oh, that's good. Is it going to be objective? You're going to have other people look and decide if you're successful or is it going to be subject? It's going to be subjective. All right. Now, when you're an employee, 
Uh, you get a paycheck. Have I covered this? Good. Uh, when you're an employee, you get a paycheck. One of the reasons you go to school and get a trade and all that kind of stuff or learn something is so you can get a good job. You can get a paycheck and give your best 40 hours a week to accomplish somebody else's goals, correct? It's not your goals, it's somebody else's goals when you're working with somebody else. Okay. Then they give you a paycheck. And then your leftover hours, you take that paycheck and buy as much of your lifestyle as you can after you've done your laundry and washed the car and all that with the paycheck that you got, correct? So if your orientation is getting a job and getting paid, then that's one orientation. The second you're self-employed, all of the work is the lifestyle. Monday morning going to work is lifestyle. Everything you do, everybody you talk to, everything you read, every phone call you make, it's all that lifestyle. So all of a sudden, the money part isn't all that necessary, isn't all that important. You're not doing it for the money. Now the money is, uh, as Drucker says, is another business expense, like utilities, uh, but it's not uh, uh, a goal in itself. And your goal in business is not to pay this, uh, the utility bill. Your goal in business is to serve customers, make, make uh, 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 customers and grow the business. Uh, expense, uh, uh, salary, and a net is there. So in this, and notice here there's salary and a net. If it's your own business, there's the salary you're paying yourself and a net, depending on the form of the company, of course, too, whether it's uh, uh, subchapter S or whatever else. So you got a problem here. Uh, how much money do you need to make? Well, most people, I really, it, was, it was wonderful all those years that Bill Gates was one of the least paid people at Microsoft. Well, of course, he doesn't want to be making more than what it was, 90000 up until 1988, because if you took in $5 million a year, you'd give three-quarters of it, or two-thirds, or whatever, to Uncle Sam. Just leave it retained earnings inside the company. That's what people who are self-employed do. They work with their CPA to keep as much value as possible with themselves using the form of the company, whether it's a subchapter mm -hmm. S or a straight S corporation or LLC or whatever else. And that would be between you and your CPA, looking at your circumstances and what to do. So I'm not going to get into that. But uh, the, uh, the business that you have is your lifestyle. So you probably need a lot less money than you think to be happy, right? Now, have you ever heard the stories of people who are making, say, 50,000 bucks a year get a huge raise to $150,000 a year? At $50,000 a year, they were two paychecks away from the poorhouse. You hear those, those kinds of stories? Then they get a raise to $150,000, and then they are two paychecks away from the poorhouse. How does that happen? Have you heard those stories before? Never heard those stories? I, Classic. Uh, why does that happen? Well, they go from Volkswagen to BMW. They go from fish and chips to, to caviar. They go from 12 channels on, on uh, cable to 500 channels. They don't watch 500 channels, but they got 500 channels on a huge TV set. So they end up burning through the 150,000, and they still don't save anything. And what is the savings rate in the United States right now? 8%. Oh, is that? 8%. The savings rate? Yes. No, it's, it's actually negative. There's a negative savings rate of, what is it, three quarters of a percent right now? Yeah, we actually spend more than we make right now. Why not? It's all going to be over soon anyway. Uh, so, uh, uh, so most people have nothing. And they get the 401ks, which uh, uh, I think I mentioned the uh, FedEx pilot who's finding out his pension's empty. Uh, a lot of people finding their pensions are empty. Uh, well, so maybe they didn't make as much as they thought. That is being an employee. On your own, it's a completely different scenario. Everything you do is your work, and you need as much money. Probably not. You're actually trying to make as little as possible because you want to retain it and put it to work. All right. Again, that will be between you and your, your, uh, your CPA. But let's say you said, one year from now, I need to have $36,000 net profit. Thirty-six thousand dollars sitting in the bank. Liebenden gibt es kein Gesetz. Allerdings, allerdings, things, Allah.